came 1938. Uh, on the 9th of November, uh, all of a sudden we had no idea. Uh, we smelled the uh, burning on later when we lived a little while, a little f uh, away from the synagogue. They destroyed the synagogue, they burned it down. And uh, they had to they had to bring in a certain amount of Jews. They had a quota. Every town, the Nazis did everything, Kedas and Kedin. You know, they had a quota, they had to bring in so many Jews from Fulda. And some of the Jews had had somebody tell them that there was going to be trouble. And they ran into the woods, including the rabbi. Uh, I was 16 years at the time. Um, all of a sudden, uh, the Nazis came and they ransacked the apartment. They threw everything down, the silver and the gold and everything that was in the apartment, out the window. And on the bottom of the, the bottom on the street, we were on the first floor, one flight up. And downstairs, on the, uh, on the street, were the Goyesha women standing with their, um, what do you call it, the, the, the aprons, the big aprons there, on catching the silver and gold that was thrown out the window. The same women that put on the lights, on burnt, the, 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 the same women were downstairs on the street catching it. Well, people from my building, people that we were friendly with, people that we knew for 20, 30 years. Can you imagine how we felt? Nobody oh. helped. Helped? No one. We had a Catholic home across the street from our business. For when we knocked on the door on that 9th of November, they refused to open for us. And they were always friendly before. We will not, we will not help you, we cannot help you, you won't do anything for you. After they had thrown out all the belongings that were worthwhile, uh, others came and looked for me. I was taken in uh, that comes to, then now comes the very hard part. I was taken in and uh, was marched to an assembly pl a point where about 70 Jewish men were assembled and on the way there's people on both sides going spat in my face, called, cursed and called all kinds of names. Uh, when we came to this assembly point, we were uh, marched off into a train, which was a cattle train, and we were sent to a town by the name of Hanau, which is closer to my grandfather's where he lived. There was the assembly, that was the, the big plan where the whole train was going to be sent to wherever we went. We didn't know at that time where, it's, where we were going to be. And there the whole district was assembled. Uh, when I walked in, with the people from my hometown, my grandfather was there already. They had arrested him in his hometown. When he saw me... That was in Hanau. In Hanau, yeah. 
when he saw me, I'll never forget. His face turned white. He was a tall man. He bent over. And he was beside himself. I couldn't talk to him. I was on the other side. They wouldn't let us talk. All of a sudden, I see him, and they were assembled in a rows, standing. In the middle of the room was a table where the SS was sitting with lists, getting over the lists. All of a sudden, and the pistols were on the table, they had the pistols on the table. All of a sudden, I see my grandfather getting up standing there and walking over to the table. He goes in his pocket and he takes out his iron cross that was his life. He said, um, I'm a hero from the First World War. I want you to send this boy home. He's only 16 years old. They looked at him. They gave him back the iron cross and they said, he's not going home, but you're going home. Because he had the iron cross first class, they released him. So, it's not what he really, what he wanted, but he had no choice. We were then assembled and in a cattle train was sent to Buchenwald from there. 